IDE students. So this lesson is 2.1.3 and it is actually the implementation of AOI design. So this presentation slash video is going to walk you through a bunch of examples of how we take logic statements, create circuits and vice versa. We've done some of this already, but this is more from a design perspective um, and will require all of the skills we've gotten so far with AOI design to actually implement them. All right, let's get started. All right, everyone, so this is 2.1.3 and it's AOI logic implementation. Specifically in this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we design AOI logic circuits from an SOP logic expression and how we design a logic circuit from a product of sums POS expression. So we've looked at SOP expressions before, sum of products. We've not really looked at product of sums, um, but we will be doing that in this lesson. So basically the visual down here at the bottom demonstrates what we are going to be doing. So we're taking our logic expression and looking at how it is equivalent to a circuit. So for our design steps for creating a sum of project logic circuit, we need to implement each term in the logic expression with an AND gate um, and the same number of inputs as there are variables. So if we have AB, that's going to give us a two input gate, ABC, three input gate, ABCD, four input gate. And then at the end, we or together the final outputs um, of the AND gates to produce that logic expression. So sum of products results in an or. So with that being said, sometimes we don't have access to logic gates that have four or three inputs, and we're limited to logic gates that only have two inputs, in which case we're gonna have to work on cascading inputs in order to be able to create the sum of product logic expression at the end. So let's take a look at an example of this. So we're gonna design an AOI logic circuit for the SOP logic expression below. So we've got F1 is equal to A naught B, C naught D, or B, C, D naught, or A, B naught. Looking at this, take a moment, solve this example, and then we'll go over the answer. Now you are not limited by the number of inputs on the logic gates in this instance, so you didn't have to cascade anything. Basically, when we start with the circuit, because we know we're going to need a or we're going to need the regular signal and the not of every input, which in this case we did not end up needing a not, but it's still good practice. So first we start by laying out our inputs A, B, C, and D. The good, the best practice is to then put an inverter in front of both of them. So that way you have it connecting directly to the inverter as well as a standard signal for it being a high signal. We can then start cascading our gate. So our first min term here has four inputs. So we're gonna get a four input AND gate right here and we're gonna connect those together. So if I trace this back, this is connected to A, this is connected to B, this is connected to C naught, and this is connected to D. And actually, if I trace this back, it's connected to A naught. I misspoke. My second min term has three, so I would use a three input AND gate. And then again, we connect this one back to B. Okay, our middle is connected to C. And then our last lead is connected to D naught. My last min term only has two, so I've got A, B naught, so I've got a two input AND gate. And again, that's connecting to A and B naught. We then have, because we have three final min terms, we get a three input OR gate, and that results in our final output. 
So again, in this class, we only have access to two input gates. So because of that, um, we have to, well, we have two input OR gates and then two input AND gates and three input AND gates. Most of the design problems you're going to be facing, you're only going to be allowed to use two input gates. So we have to limit our design to these gates. So that means we have to do something called cascading. It's where we take our midterms and break them into pieces to be able to create the final output. So let's take a look at what this looks like once we redesign it. Once we limit ourselves to two input or three input gates, what we're looking at is a cascading effect. So I start with a two input AND gate that is connected to A0 and B. I then come out of my A0 B and go into another AND gate, which is connected to C0 and D. That means coming out of this AND gate, I have my first midterm. I just had to break those four pieces into two separate AND gates. I then use a three input AND gate for my B, C, and D naught input. If we were doing this with a two gate, we would have to cascade that just like we did up here. And then I have my final two input gate over here. So that is my A and my B naught. Once we have that, my output from right here and my output from right here go into the first OR gate. Remember, we only have two input OR gates. So when we have a set of three min terms to create the final expression, we have to cascade our OR gates. So we start with one OR gate that takes the first two min terms. Then that output goes into another OR gate and our final min term is connected. This results in that final expression coming out on the other side. So now designing a product of some logic circuit is really similar to an SOP. Um, and we implement each min max term in the logic expression with an OR gate uh, with the same number of inputs as there are variables in the max term. So A or so A or B is a two input gate, A or B or C is a three input gate, A or B or C or D is a four input gate. We then have to AND together the outputs of the OR gates or the logic expression. So think of the product of sum as a flip or inverse of our sum of product. Um, so we are looking at OR gates inside of our max terms, and then we have an AND gate at the end. So if necessary, again, we can cascade our gates to create something um, when we have more inputs and only two input logic gates. So let's take a minute and look at this example. So you're going to design an AOI logic circuit for this expression. So we have F2 where W or X0 or Y0 or Z and W0 or X or Y0 and W or Z0. So this is our expression. Take a minute to think about this. You might want to draw this one out. So work through this problem and then we'll go over the answer. limits on the inputs of our gates. So our first max term is W or X0 or Y0 or Z. So we take a four input OR gate and we connect that to the components of that max term. So we're going over here to W, X0, Y0, and Z. We then have a three input OR gate and that is connecting to W0. It connects to X right here and it connects to Y0. We then have a two input as our last max term, and that is W and Z0. 
That all then gets cat. That all then gets put into a three input AND gate as our final output. So now knowing that we only actually have access to two input OR gates, two input AND gates, and three input AND gates, take a minute to redesign that circuit with that in mind. I'm gonna give you a few seconds and then we'll go over the answer. So this is what we would have if we were cascading these gates. So because we only have two input OR gates, we have to sequence them like this. So we take that first max term and we break it into four or two, two input OR gates. We can then cascade them into one OR gate and our final max term would actually be placed right here. Same thing down here. We're gonna cascade from this OR gate to this one and then it can go into our final AND gate. And then down here, again, we have a two input or with our two and it goes into that third. Now, in the event that we are only using two input ands, which is a limitation you're gonna be seeing, you're actually gonna have two and gates cascaded here to get that final output. All right, so that is a wrap on 2.1.3 AY design logic implementation. So hopefully you worked with those examples and that should make your working class way easy. So I'll see you soon.